close witnessing consciousness and polarity of life what happens when polarities disappear in a way nothing happens nothing dissolves because all happenings is polar when love and hate both dissolve and they do dissolve what happens when you love you hate also and you hate the same person you love hate is just hidden and when hate comes up love goes down indeed life happens as opposites both support one another like gravitational force love and hate like two poles of a magnet attraction and repulsion virtue and vice heaven and hell never ask what happens to these polarities when you are in witnessing consciousness witnessing consciousness is buddha consciousness or awakening consciousness do not ask instead wait for what happens you can ask and some answer can be given but that answer cannot become an authentic answer for you and this answer can never become the jump ahead do not ask what happens when one dies whatsoever is said will be meaningless because you are is still alive what happens when someone is dead you will have to pass through it unless you are dead you cannot know it whatsoever is said can be believed or trust but this is meaningless rather ask how to be dead not affected by these how to be neutral so that you know what happens no one else can die for you also no one else can experience no one else experience can be the experience for you you will have to die death cannot be another experience another person's experience for you it has to be your own similar is the case here what happens when polarity disappears when you are not aspiring for moments of happiness to offset the moments of sadness or depression what happens when polarity disappears in a way nothing happens you are neutral to both happening dissolves because all happening is polar when love and hate both dissolve and they do dissolve at times they do not exist for you they are meaningless for you love and hate are meaningless for you but you say there is love for you but that love is not the love which is polar to hate it is the transcendence the moment that you experience you live in the moments of joy or love or lovingness is the outcome of witnessing consciousness it is not the outcome of the polar opposites when you love you hate also and when you hate and you hate the same person you love hate is just hidden and when hate comes up love goes down so witnessing consciousness takes you to a state to a situation when neither love matters for you nor hate you are just neutral to it when moments of hate or sadness comes 
it does, does not bother you in any way. So too, love do not, the moments of happiness also never bothers you. Jesus says, love your enemies. And I say that you cannot do otherwise. And you do love your enemies. You hate them so much. And without love, hate is impossible. Love is just the other side of the coin. And where is the demarcation for love and hate? Where love ends, hate begins. There is a grey extension. When do you hate someone and when do you love someone? Can you define the line of demarcation? You love and hate the same person. The moment hate comes, hate becomes love and love can become hate. Any moment hate can become love and love can become hate. This is the polarity of the mind. This is how mind functions. Do not become worried about it. If you know, you will never become worried. If you know, if you love someone, you will know hate will be there. If someone loves you, you will expect both love and hate and you are equanimous amidst the two situations but what happens in a buddha consciousness when love and hate both disappear what happens it is difficult to express what happens but whatsoever has been left around buddha is more like love without hate it has been felt around Buddha. It is not that Buddha feels it so. Buddha cannot feel love now because he cannot feel hate. For him neither love nor hate exists. He cannot feel love but around him everyone has felt a deep love overflowing. The moment you start feeling love overflowing around someone, when you are in that company, you are feeling a moment of lovingness. The, the normal tendencies of the mind begin to disappear. We can describe it as love without hate, but then quality is different. It is a state when all the negative forces, they leave their natural tendencies. They take an example. If you're, you, there is heat wave, an air conditioner is on in the room. So in the room there is an environment that makes you feel comfortable. The body temperature, you feel coolness. And even if the door opens and remains open for a while, it does not affect the coolness of the room. It remains the same. When you are around an awakened one in whom the polarity has disappeared. You feel a different kind of, you cannot call it love, you cannot call it hate. You feel a certain kind of energy flowing towards you wherein you feel that nothing matters for you. Nothing matters for you, neither happiness nor sorrow, neither hate nor love. You are in a totally different state, like you are floating. You are not making any effort, but there is a floating state. With our love, 
hate is inevitably present. One colors the other. One changes the quality of the other. Hate gives a passion to love, a force and intensity, a focus quality, a concentration, while Buddha's love becomes a dispersed phenomena. Let me explain it. what is meant by dispersed phenomena. In your hate gives a passion to love, a force, an intensity. In the love for Buddha, there is no intensity. It cannot burn you. It can only keep you warm. You feel not the intensity of the passion or waves of love rushing towards you. Instead, you only feel a certain kind of warmth, a comfort. It is not fire. It is just a glow. The, when the light, when the fire is there and the fireness, the heat of the fire is not there. Instead, there is just a glow. You light a candle, around it there is a certain intensity of heat. When you light any other, even the bulb is lit, around it there is a certain kind of a heat. Quantum may be different, but around Buddha there is a glow, but there is, and that glow is warm, this different kind of a warm, but it is not the heat, it is not the fire, it is not a flame, it is just like morning light when the sun has not yet risen and the night has disappeared. So in the moments of dawn, it is there is a certain kind of a glow in the sky, the night has disappeared, the sun has not risen completely, the warmth of the sun. The heat of the sun is not there. A certain kind of pleasantness is there that also filtering into you. The night has disappeared. It is just the moment of interval when there is light without any fire. Without any flame, we have felt it as love. You are feeling it as love. It is the purest form because there is no hate. Even to feel this type of love, you have to be a very deeply meditative mind. And then you have to abandon the mind. You need a mind which can meditate. Otherwise, such a delicate and diffuse phenomena will not be felt. You have to be very deeply sensitive. You can only feel grossness in love and that grossness is given by hate. If someone simply loves you without any hate, it will be difficult for you to feel his love. You will have to grow to become more transparent, delicate and sensitive. You will have to become like a very sensitive musical instrument only then will the breeze sometimes comes to you and the breeze is so non-violent now that it will not hit you at, at all. It will just be as a delicate touch. If you are very, very aware, you will feel it, otherwise you will miss it. But this is our feeling around the Buddha, around an awakened one, but certainly not Buddha's feeling. Buddha cannot feel love or hate. Really the polar opposites have disappeared and simple presence remains. But you feel a certain kind of warmth around such a person. Enough for now.